Michael Blake Reed has offered his services as a deep trance psychic for the past 15 years. He is internationally known for the counseling and philosophies which are communicated through him by the Evergreens, a group of 7,000 entities between existences. He holds that the talent expressed through himself is a tool to be used by those wishing to make changes and add alternatives to their lives. He holds sessions for individuals needing aid, as well as some of the largest organizations in North America. And the subjects range from psychic matters to economics, psychology, politics, philosophy, religion, history, and scientific investigation. He currently resides in Surrey, B.C., with his partner and coordinator of sessions, Ellie Roselle. Michael, when did you first discover that you had this connection with the Evergreens? In 1974, uh, Paula, I was in an office, and uh, frankly, I was goofing off. I was going to take 25 minutes to have a nap in a chair, somewhat like this. And I fell asleep. Someone came into the room to make a telephone call, and while she was making that telephone call, she asked a question of the person she was calling, and I, fast asleep, answered it. And I woke up after 25 minutes to find several people on a nearby Chesterfield writing things down on paper, most upset that I'd woken up. And when they told me that I was uh, talking in my sleep, um, I, frankly, it was out of my particular milieu, it was out of my particular paradigm, put it that way. And the only reason I did it a second time was to prove it couldn't be done, because, as I said, it was not what I was used to. That was more than 6,500 sessions ago. You were quite involved in the field of parapsychology at that time, though. I had an interest in how the mind developed. I was associated with an organization called the Mind Institute in Toronto, and uh, I was teaching some of their courses. But this thing was not in my particular view or something that I had aimed for. But it, So it just came to you, and you seemed to be the right sort of a person that they could speak through. Seems to be. They seem to have chosen you then. Seems to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you know that these spirits are the number of spirits that they s that you claim that they are? Well, do, is there a, a sort of a conversation <laughs> between you and them? No, it's sort of a directly through. I, the, my consciousness has moved to one side. But as um, has been pointed out, there's two things here. There's the process of it and the content of it. Now, as uh, the Evergreens themselves have said, now we were the persons who gave them the name the Evergreens. They didn't say, we're the Evergreens. As they say, how, whatever explanation is there, it's there. It doesn't change anything. It's the content of the, the material when there's an interaction between a person who is asking questions of the Evergreens. That is of the greatest importance. There's the process of it and the content of it. These six and a half to seven thousand entities called the Evergreens are still within, uh, between existences, even though you've been speaking to them for 15 years. Would they be the same entities throughout those 15 years? Uh, according to them, they are between existences, and they, uh, that is not a static state, so that does alter somewhat. One of our researchers has found using public sessions, not private sessions because they are uh, confidential, but in the public sessions, whenever there's been a question out asked about a certain subject, the phrasing not only changes, the usage of words changes. It's almost like there's a, a different personality or personalities involved with different types of questions. It's quite noticeable in certain situations. So it depends on the question yes. as to who will be answering Seems from to among be. that number, Seems from to among be. that group. Yes. And uh, they are then experts within their own fields? Seem to be. We've had people in the past 15 years with all those numbers of uh, people, it's about 20,000 people have uh, used the facilities of the Evergreens right across uh, North America and uh, many, many places in the world, there seems to be no point at which they don't have an answer. Um, for Ellie, who uh, my wife and also the conductor of the sessions, as she says, has pointed out quite often that uh, it's almost not understandable to her when the, uh, the questioner may be an engineer and get into engineering aspects 
or uh, some physicist gets into that area of certain areas of physics that's extremely interested, or somebody comes in with a problem about a family or, or whatever. Uh, she says uh, that she has noted that the conversation is perfectly to the level and the expertise of the person. And the vocabulary of that particular seems to, topic. Seems to match. Mm -hmm. seems they talk about um, things that I'm not cognizant of, uh, but they use the terminology that that person understands. That's fascinating. You publish a journal, a quarterly journal, yeah. which is a com compilation of your sessions with the Evergreens, Yes. where you cover a number of topics from astrology to weather to politics, economics. Yes. The Evergreens have called every election correctly uh, in Canada and every election in the States, as far as uh, presidential is uh, concerned. The, um, they called also the weather conditions in Alaska. They've called the weather conditions in British Columbia. And for the last, we've been producing this journal for the past uh, seven years. And it's been constantly and consistently at about an 85% accuracy rate uh, concerning weather, politics, money and markets, uh, family and lifestyles. Seems to, uh, seems to pick out those things that are uh, dominant across the next three months. Mm -hmm. And so for this reason of accuracy in, in the future, as far as things progressing, people come to you not just personally, but uh, you've said that major corporations come to yes. you for advice. Well, they come because we are, well, for, as far as they're concerned, a random factor introducing things that they've possibly not thought of or that maybe an organization is in a particular direction, a particular thrust, and they're wondering if that is going to get them the results that they're looking for. So uh, they may come in and say, well, we have uh, seven or eight uh, uh, alternatives. And the Evergreens will come up with about five, six, seven, ten more alternatives and saying these things, these things. So you can be an advisor on, on uh, a number of different topics, finances, economics, politics. A surprisingly for, for wide range. And groups that you certainly can't name. Exactly. But, we hold our client list very mm, confidential. But a very impressive sort of a client list, I'm sure. It is. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm proud of them. There is a living philosophy from the Evergreens, which is printed in one of your brochures that I'd like to read. I am the result of me. I am more. I am never less. I discover newness about me each and every day. I act because inaction is decay. I speak the, because the words need to be said. I am the right person. I have no enemies. I have only friends I have yet to meet. And I have no masters but myself. But well, they're more than affirmations because there's a particular way of constructing them. You can take the first statement and the eighth statement together and put them together, second and seventh, third and sixth, fourth and fifth. And you can even put them in, uh, on top of uh, and superimpose them on a Maslow triangle. And you find out that some of these phrases that are useful, if you learn them, then you alter your relationship to where your own self is and to certain basic needs some security levels, some belonging levels, some self-esteem levels. Because when you get to the point of self-actualization using the Maslow model, it is speaking and acting. So you'll find that those two phrases, I speak because the words need to be said, I act because inaction is decay. These are the, the two dominant aspects, not total, of, uh, but the two dominant aspects of a self-actualizing per, uh, person. And any person who is creative and productive would have those as affirmations, wouldn't they? Very much indeed. Mm -hmm. The Evergreens continually say it is your choice as to what your future can and will be. Because... Which means people have more power than they may imagine the, to direct uh, their the, future. One of the things, and you've used the word power, and the word power there in empowerment, one of the things is that the... Uh, if you notice that the, as you're saying, 20,000 people, six and a half odd se thousand sessions across the past 15 years, but well, where's, where's the groupies? Where's the, the um, hordes of followers? Is not what the Evergreens have aimed from the beginning, have never established a dependency. The objective of an individual is to be in charge of his own existence so that he or she can make his or her choices about what he or she wants to do. And go on from and the session from to be more independent and, yeah. and creative. And creative. And 
able to do more than cope. Um, some people come to the Evergreens because they've got reached a point in their lives when they're finding it difficult to cope. Then the Evergreens will give them not only information that they need to cope, but the information to get beyond that. Ellie Roselle is now assisting oh, as Michael that. assumes his state of trance. This is about a seven minute process as he falls into a deep sleep, his consciousness is set aside, his blood pressure and heart rate fall very low, and the Evergreens are located. I'd like to ask you some questions specifically about the area of the lower mainland. What is the long range effect, socially and economically, of the Asian influx in our area? First of all, we realize that, the, that uh, the Asian influx is a very, very profitable uh, advantage for the lower mainland. We realize that most Asians coming to this portion of the world enjoy the slowness of pace of this place. And what you will see is that then, because of, of they themselves, that the pace will increase. Uh, British Columbia as a whole benefits from this. Uh, Realising that at one time, British Columbia was considered a place far away from the centre of things. It was far from Ottawa. It was far from the manufacturing uh, bases in the uh, western, again, eastern portions of Canada. But if you look at it from the developing aspect of the Pacific Rim, it is ideally closely located. I'm also interested in what would, how the free trade situation will affect our community specifically. First realize the, that the eastern portion of Canada is, is very east west oriented <coughs> because that is the trading base of itself that already British Columbia is north south oriented and that uh, there is a very strong interaction with uh, specifically Washington state in the community of Delta there is a great controversy about this very issue of development and growth do you see this being resolved, and how? If it is allowed to grow with managed growth, then we see Delta will be as beautiful, as lovely, and as good a place to live. Always remember this, that Delta itself establishes its own character when it realizes the quality of life is always established by those who expect nothing else but the best. Thank you for